Okay, so let's create some facts for uh, people who've been president. So here we have President Washington, Lincoln, Kennedy, and Obama. I can also use membership in a list to determine who's president. So I can say member X in the list and I'll give it a list of some more presidents. So let's consult this file. And so who's president? Well, we have Washington, Lincoln, Kennedy, Obama. Those are the ones we set up the separate facts for. But then we also had that rule that said, you're president if you're in this list. So that's Adams, Jefferson, and FDR. So I can do specific queries. So Kennedy was a president. And you'll notice it doesn't immediately come back with an answer if I ask, if I say I don't want this first answer. So sometimes you don't get a choice. You know, so notice it says true here. And if I hit the space bar, it says false. That's because of this rule that says, well, I found a fact, so it's true. But you want me to keep looking? I will. Here's a rule. But according to this rule, Lincoln wasn't president, so it's false. However, it found true, so the rule works. And if I say President Trump, I get false. Does that mean that Trump isn't president? No. If we Googled it right now, who is president, I think it would probably come up as Trump. Now, why does it say false? Well, remember, Prolog operates under the closed world assumption. Anything that's not in our database, it assumes is false. So let's do a, another rule. So this one is not going to be a good rule. Because let's put some scores in. So we'll say that the D-backs don't know when their last baseball game score was so we'll just make one up we'll say that they had four and the dodgers had two okay um, again we're short of sports scores so we'll do another score okay so i'm going to say who won and I'm going to call this rule, rule one bad because it's not a good rule. And we'll get X's score. And we'll get Y's score. And we're going to check to see that score X is greater than score Y. Now, one question I get here is, is do we need to do the rule like we did in the city where we use the no unification operator to say X and Y need to be different? We don't actually have to do that because since this is greater than, the cases that are equal aren't going to satisfy the rule. So let's save this and consult the file. And you'll notice we get a warning, singleton variable. Now, I recommend that anytime you get a warning, you try to get rid of it. The reason this is a singleton is because I don't use the value anywhere else. X is in my head. Score X and score Y, I use to do a comparison, but I don't do anything with Y. So I'm going to put an underscore in front of it, making it an anonymous variable. Now, that's not always the fix for a singleton variable. Another time you can get it is if you misspell something. So just to show you, if I make this called, if I call this just score, when I consult, now score and score Y are singletons, but clearly that's a typo. I want to make sure that I use the same value for both. So now, did the Diamondbacks win? Yeah, they won. Good. Okay, who else won? The Diamondbacks, the Patriots, the Patriots won, the Patriots won. The Falcons won. 
the Falcons won again and false. Now, if you're a Falcons fan, maybe you appreciate this, but certainly the Super Bowl, the Falcons lost. So something's wrong with my rule. And the problem here is that when I have these scores, these are just facts. So the Patriots scored 34. So they beat the Diamondbacks, Dodgers, and Falcons because their score is higher. So that's a bad way to do it. A better rule would be to say in a game, Diamondbacks had four, Dodgers had two, and in another game, the Falcons had 28, the Patriots had 34, and then my one rule is going to be game X and score X. And I don't care about Y here, I just care about the Y score. And here, score X is greater than score Y. So let's consult, and I have a problem. And notice it'll tell you the line and the column. So 72, ah, this is a problem. I think the rest of that is correct. Oh, 71, line 31. I'm missing a comma here. Okay, so let's consult. So who won? The Diamondbacks won, and that's it. Now think, why could that be? Well, notice our score is only, our rule is only true if the first team won. For our Super Bowl rule, our Super Bowl rule here, the Patriots are second. So we need to have a case where Y wins the game. And here, we don't care about X's score. We do care about Y's. And score Y is greater than score X. So now, the Diamondbacks won and the Patriots won. Okay, so let's do a couple more rules just to give some more, uh, just show you some things we can do. So we can say, Bob is happy, and we can say that Alice is happy, and we can also say that Bob is talkative. Okay, and there's some things that are annoying. Jar Jar is annoying. Nats are annoying. And let's create a rule that says someone who is talkative and happy is annoying. Now, that's not a judgment. That's just a rule. Whether the rule is correct or not, I'll leave it up to you. But if I ask who's annoying, Jar Jar, Nats, and Bob is annoying because Bob is happy and he's also talkative. Okay, so now we're going to create a robot AI, a very simple one. So we have some bad guys. And and uh, let's have some other rules that say um, a, a bad guy that Batman fights is Two-Face, and Batman also fights the Joker, and Superman, he'll fight Lex Luthor. Okay, so we're going to have a rule that our robot AI is going to fight bad guys. Okay, so let's consult. 
So let's see if our uh, robot AI can go do some good. And this is all sorts of bad. So I called this bad guys. Now notice, Prologue is pretty smart. It said, hey, you asked for bad guys. Well, I know bad guy, but not bad guys. So I'll abort this. And I'll change the name there. Now notice, I didn't get any warning because this is a valid rule, but it's a valid rule that doesn't reference a valid fact. So now I'm going to fight Darth Vader, Darth Sidious, Kylo Ren. Now you might see a problem here. I'm not fighting Lex Luthor, the Joker. Those guys are getting away. So I need to have another rule, X, where I don't really care who the hero is, but I do care about the bad guy. If I consult this, now I'm fighting Darth Vader, Darth Sidious, Kylo Ren, but also Two-Face, the Joker, and Lex Luthor. Now, I want to be careful who I, or how I put these rules together, especially if I'm creating an, a, robot AI, a robot AI that seems to fight people. Let's just say I'm in a bad mood one day. I was like, you know what? I've gotten rid of all the other bad guys, so let's go after the annoying people. Same people, the Joker, Lex Luthor. Jar Jar. Well, okay. Nats. Seems like a waste of an AI, but okay. And also Bob. So because I had a rule that said Bob was annoying, now all of a sudden, my robot's going after him. And we could even say, fight Alice, if for some reason we have something against her. And now... We're fighting everybody. Okay, so you want to be careful with your rules so that you don't do bad things. Uh, now, what about this? What if we're going to uh, fight for justice? That seems uh, a good thing to do. Now we're not going to do that. Hmm. So we want our robot AI to be good. So let's do this. Let's have it fight whoever we tell it to. So we consult. So now we fight for justice. Yes. How about Alice? Yeah, we're still going to fight Alice, unfortunately. What about me? Whoa. Okay, so now we have a problem. And what this is saying, that's an anonymous variable. So that says that fights anything passed to the rule. Be careful with that. So another th thing you want to be careful of is don't, and I'm going to comment this out because that's such a bad rule. Don't use anonymous variables to say, or to get things to work. Okay. So um, two quick things I want to show you uh, just so that you can, uh, you might want to use this for testing. Sometimes you want to write output when a file is consulted. This is really nice for testing code, and you'll actually see with the project, I'll give you some test code. And if I have a rule with an empty head, it's always true. So it's going to run this rule. So it's going to go and see who, not bad man, Batman is going to fight. And I'm going to use right here. Now, normally I don't, you shouldn't use right, but when you're trying to get output when it's consulted, that's the one place that this is a good idea. And I'm going to write the string Batman has defeated, and then I'm going to write the result of that variable, and then a new line. And I'll put a note here. Don't use write in your rules normally. So I'll save this. And we'll consult. And now we notice it says Batman has defeated Two-Face. It doesn't find all of them, but it does check and get a result. We'll talk later in the semester about how to get all the results of a rule. Okay, so one other thing I want to show you, and this is a really cool thing that Python can do. 
So I'm going to have a rule called is integer. And you'll see it's an integer if it's a number from 1 to 20. So if I have an equation a plus b is equal to c, I can write a rule that can check if that's correct. a is an integer, and b is an integer, and c is a plus b. Okay, so let's consult this. And I can say equation, uh, let's say 2, 7, 9, that's true. 2, well, let's say 12, 3, uh, 13, that's false. I could say equation 4, 7, x, and it'll give me an answer. But the other thing that this can do is any of these can be empty. So I can say x plus 10 is equal to 15 or 14, and it'll give me 4. I can even say equation x, y is 7, and it doesn't like that. Ah. Because that should be a b there. So let me consult this again. And I can say equation x, y, 7, and it'll say 0 and 7 is 7, 1 and 6 is 7. It'll give me all the possible combinations of numbers that when I add them together, I get 7. So that's a pretty powerful thing that Prolog can do. It can find the value for any of these parameters that I make variables. So if you wrote an equation function in Java, for example, it would need to know x and y so that it could give you 7 or give you the result.